Hey everybody, how's it going on this lovely Friday? I think it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. Yeah, it's Friday. I had to look. I'm surprised. <laughs> that was quick. Uh, I know there's some people who look up recipes and uh, they don't cook. And, you know, they're just curious or whatever, or they never have cooked, you know, and some people are like uh, thinking, well, I got a party to go to, and so I'm going to have to stop by the grocery store and buy one of their uh, already made uh, dishes, you know, that's, I've seen those, I mean, they're recognizable, <laughs> let's put it that way, but I mean, that's okay, I'm not trying to knock down the grocery store is food or anything, but I'm going to show you something that uh, almost anybody can do, literally. It's quick, and uh, I'm doing it today because I love it. To tell you the truth, I do. And um, it's super simple. Like I say, anybody can do it. I made some bread earlier, and I've got some crumbs around here <laughs> okay so what we're gonna do is real quick couple of cans of green beans. Just your regular old green beans. And you're going to drain them. Set your oven for uh, 350. That green bean tried to get away. going to open up a couple of cans of cream of mushroom soup. And dump them right in. The whole thing, you don't need to water it down or add water or anything because it's got liquid in it. Trust me, it's going to pour out. I mean, come out when you when you do this project here. I call it a project. But... Okay, and here's a second can. Now you can you can actually use cream of mushroom soup. Uh, you can use cream of chicken soup. I haven't tried cream of celery yet. I don't know if the celery would be too overpower, overpowering for, uh, for this dish or not. Um, what you're going to want to do is get this mixed up. And I know you're saying, man, it's thick. Yeah. But 
trust me on this. It's got enough uh, liquids in it from the uh, cream that they're going to seep down. Now you can add more mushrooms to this if you like. Uh, you know, so it's sort of versatile. And I went to the store the other day. You know, I was a little disappointed. Because usually they have those gigantic, gi-monstrous uh, things of these French's uh, crispy fried onions. But they didn't. This is what they had, and it was the only one they had. So we're just going to sprinkle a little bit on here. Not much. Don't worry, you're going to save the rest. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. A lot of times the uh, liquids will actually uh, absorb, or the onion will absorb the liquids. And then you're going to have a soft onions on top. So what I did is I put half of the... Uh, half of the can of those on top and of course uh, you can make crispy fried onions like this it's just like if you're making uh, onion rings you know except you just crisp them up a little bit more no doesn't take a brain surgeon to do it. So I used probably a quarter. Well, let's see. About to there. So maybe a half. Close to it. Um, and if you want to, what you can do. And I'm going to do it. Just because I don't want it bubbling over and burning the top. And, hey, everything else. set my uh, my oven for 355 to get it nice and warm and it should kick off here in a second and start beeping and tell me it's nice and warm and then we're gonna put it in there for probably about a uh, 20 minutes or so 15 or 20 minutes and we're going to remove the top the aluminum foil and we're going to put the rest of the uh, crispy fried onions on top of it and if you want to I have seen uh, Philippi a Filipina girl actually she was an ex-wife uh, you know they over there I'm trying to think of the word um, resourceful and she didn't have, I think we were in California or someplace, and we didn't have any onions uh, to make uh, French fried onions, and we couldn't find the uh, crispy fried onions. So she made crispy fried uh, um, garlic, which came out really good. You know, so... Uh, a lot of my dishes are easy and you can use your own imagination and you know uh, you I've seen this dish done with asparagus which was okay um, instead of the green beans and I've seen people mix the green beans with the asparagus and and do this so you know you can uh, make it your own you know, it's it's your kitchen, your rules. You'd be proud of it. Okay, we're at right now uh, 310 degrees. We're going to pump it up to uh, 355 degrees Fahrenheit. That's F. I don't know what Celsius would be, but that's what we're cooking it at. 
<laughs> and uh, for like 20 to 30 minutes. I will pull it out after 20 minutes to see how it's doing and uh, and make sure that it's um, it's the consistency and everything I want. Uh, because some of it, that's why I'm, I've got the aluminum foil on it also. I want to keep a lot of the moisture in. You know, pretty much all of it if I can. And uh, so anyway... And I've got the the oven on the center rack. I know a lot of people confuse, kind of like nuts and bolts. Some people confuse nuts and they, with bolts and bolts with nuts. And some people confuse um, stoves with ovens and ovens with stove. And uh, <laughs> I remember when... It was, it was 91 days after uh, the owners put this, it was, it was a used, this used stove in, and uh, 91 days, and all of a sudden one day, I'm in there, and I was paying bills, it seems like I do a lot of that, and uh, the whole kitchen lit up like a, a welding torch, and it was the bottom, I'll back this up. See, I'm going to put this on the middle uh, grate here, but it was the uh, bottom element. It literally burned up like a, a uh, like a welding torch. And I never knew, but one of them is always hot. It's always connected. But, uh, so I, I called the the landlords and the lady is from Britain and I told her my oven the element burned up and uh, so as you can see this is a a glass uh, stove top she called the place where she bought it from and said that the uh, stove top had burned up and the lady who was on the phone with her said, well, he must have dropped something on it. <laughs> and so you can see where the confusion comes in because, and, and this lady, uh, the British lady, she's been cooking all her life. She was in her 70s or so. And uh, so you can see where some people, if you say the wrong thing, it'll give someone the wrong idea. And, uh, but it was needless to say, uh, they started buying brand new stuff because, the company where they bought this used uh, this used stove slash oven, um, they had to pay to get it fixed. <laughs> so, yeah, they decided to start buying new stuff. Everything I have is the oldest original that they had. And when a management company took over, they asked me, "Well, how did you?" How did you get blessed with all the old stuff? And I said, I just keep it going. You know, I can... I'm kind of resourceful, too. You know, I had a... Some things you just can't... You can't, uh repair and when I say you can't repair them um, I had a handyman over here and uh, he said I told him I said I think my hot water heater is going out so he decided to look it up, and it didn't have a, a number. And so we went to the website, and it says, if you have a hot water heater, um, and it has no number, it was made prior to 1990, and probably needs to be replaced. So, uh, they didn't replace it. Because I was told by the management company, that uh, 
they wouldn't replace it until it goes completely out. I'm like, okay, because when it does go out, I'm going to go rent a hotel room to take my shower. And as you can see, this is uh, it's clean, right? This is my hot water. And don't let that white gray looking stuff, don't let it fool you into believing it's uh, bubbles. It's not, it's a film. I showed it to some uh, other uh, handy people. And uh, <laughs> I said, well, the jar was probably, no, the jar wasn't dirty. Because it had floaties that floated on top. But uh, as it stands right now, to rent a hotel room, it's like $500 a night. So if my hot water heater goes out, because they've had, they've sent people over um, before, and I'd tried it before also, turning the hot water down, turning it up, and so forth, and uh, to no avail. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting when it finally goes out, because right now, um, I can take a wonderful five minute shower with warm water. And when I was in the Marine Corps, uh, you've heard of, uh, the three minute shower. Yep. When the ship would get, uh, even though they produced their own, um, clean water, when it would get low, they'd put us on what they call a Navy shower, which is like three minutes, uh, we actually had a guy who would stand there with a, a horn, one of these uh, air compressed horns, and you'd stand in front of the shower, you'd blow the horn, you got in and you rinsed, got wet and lathered it up, he'd blow it again, and and while you're la after you're, after that, you're you're uh, cleaning your body and your hair and everything, and uh, he would let you do that for three minutes, he'd give it another blow, and then you rinsed off and your shower was done. So <laughs> I'm getting about the same here. And I'm like, I'm not in the service anymore. I don't have to put up with this. But yeah, and they just went up on the rent twice. <laughs> so yeah, it's going to cost them a lot more when it finally goes out. Because I'll tell them, well, you got however many days it takes. Because I take a shower every day. Sometimes depending on what I do, twice. Anyway, Alexa, set the alarm for 25 minutes. 25 minutes, starting now. Well, anyway, I talked enough about that, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, my hair is a little bit longer now than it was in the Marine Corps, so, uh, you know, you got to rinse all that off. And this water, let me see, nope, I don't, I was going to say, um, As you can see, see the film? It's not just uh, a dirty glass. That's sticking to your body. Okay, so I'm not going to make y'all sit here and wait and just listen to me jabber. Uh, and anyway, I'm going to let this go for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and I'm going to look at it. And uh, you want it hot, you want it kind of bubbling, and because it's soup. And if, if it's bubbling and warm, then you're uh, basically you're done. Green beans, they're already pre cooked, but they're cooked anyway uh, out of the can. So, you know, so you're actually heating it up and you're going to put the rest of the. Uh, crispy fried onions on top and put it back in without a cover because you want some of those to get a little bit charred not real charred but just a little bit and uh, hopefully we can achieve achieve that here I still I mean I made as you can see more bread <laughs> and that was because uh, 
I made that because the uh, some handy people were supposed to come over and she wanted a loaf of bread and uh, but they were trying to work on another place and she didn't know if she was going to make it or not and this was yesterday and obviously she didn't make it so I had to taste it it's good bread really good bread but I'm gonna make some wheat bread next and I'm thinking about making 2,000 year old bread so that might be interesting to do anyway we will see y'all back in a few minutes okay I'm back Let's see how we did here. I was thinking, you know, here I was talking about the landlord. She's from uh, Britain. And uh, we get along really good because when I first uh, met her, I understood everything she said. See how that looks, how it's bubbling and looking so good. Okay. Now, anyway, I was I was just laughing because I was talking to her and telling her I did two tours over in uh, Britain. And it was kind of funny because I remember dating this girl or starting to date her and I was getting ready to go somewhere and she asked me if, if I wanted a brelly and I thought she was cooking oh no thank you I'm not hungry and she was talking about an umbrella and uh now we're gonna put that in there for probably about five to ten minutes maybe we're just going to keep checking it and see when it's... I mean, the kids can use this if you want them to. Anyway, uh, I was thinking about it and laughing because I forgot where I'd been. And I had to fly in to uh, North Carolina. And my, my wife, I don't know why... I don't know why she wanted to ride or got a ride with this British girl. And uh, I don't remember the reason, but maybe they had just... Uh, become close friends or something and uh <laughs> and anyway we we went back to the British girl's house her apartment and real pretty girl and uh oh and one of my men's uh wife was British too and he had gotten in kind of trouble because he was overseas on uh, what we called hostage duty. Um, it was he worked at the consulate protecting the U.S. embassy embassy duty, and he kind of got in with the this ambassador's daughter, and uh, you know when he came to me in the U.S., I saw he had been busted. And I started reading it, and they had at the embassies what they called dialing for dollars. If you do something bad enough to get in trouble, uh, your non-judicial punishment, NJP, or whatever, is done over the phone. <laughs> well, <laughs> he had married this girl, and nobody knew until it got out somehow, and uh, they were not happy about it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Him, his wife and I, <laughs> could, we could talk and he'd be sitting there going, what are y'all saying? But anyway, getting back to the story, uh, uh, we went over to this uh, British girl's house and um, 
we were there overnight. I don't remember how why, but uh, <laughs> I came out. She, she asked me if I wanted to take a shower, and I says, "Yeah." And I forgot how she said it, and uh, I says, "Yeah." My wife says, "What did you just ask him?" <laughs> it was kind of funny, and uh, she says, "I asked him if he wanted to take a shower." And then uh, when I got out of the shower, she says, are you happy? And my wife's looking like, what? And she says, she says, uh, do you want to watch footy on the telly? My wife's like, now my wife's from the Philippines. She's like, what are y'all talking about? And we could carry on a conversation. She wouldn't even have a clue what we were talking about. <laughs> and, you know, then, but it didn't matter because, you know, we always joke about the different accents and everything else. I mean, we could go down to, uh, uh, even in North Carolina, people saying no, the word no was pronounced different than no. I can tell someone when they're from that area just by the way they pronounce no. And, uh, and then you go way up in the um, Ozarks, and you might get an accent like this. And, uh, you know, my wife used to just like, man, too many accents. And then she would get with a bunch of Filipino girls and they'd be talking. They'd switch into the Tagalog. And I'd tell them, please speak just English. So I understood. And when I started dating my wife, I started asking her brothers and everything else um all the bad words <laughs> i wanted to know all the curse words and everything and uh it's getting there i wanted to all, know all the curse words and everything well her mother asked her why does he want to know all the curse words she says ask him so they asked, why do you want to learn all the curse words first? I says, that way I know if anybody's mad at me and they're cussing at me. I may not be able to speak it, but at least I'll understand it. And they said, oh, that's pretty smart, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, it helps when you go all over the, in different countries, you learn a lot of different languages and a lot of slangs, like telly is television, footy is football, um, defos, Definitely, that's over in Britain, and, uh, you know, the landlord lady, she was funny because she would say something, and her husband wouldn't understand it. She'd look at me, she said, I bet Don understood, I said, I understood every bit of it, but it took me a while to pick it all up also, so, you know, I love learning new languages and things like that, and learning history and so forth. I love history. Um, anyway. I think what I'm going to do is turn this around a little bit because the back side. We're starting to get browned. So yeah, I love history and and things like that. And, you know, they've got a new uh, a movie out, Mary Queen of Scots, which I'm related to down the line. Uh, she's from Scotland, and her, uh, it depends on how you look at it, her evil um, cousin, um, Queen Elizabeth I, I think that's what it was. Um, since she didn't have any offsprings, um, she knew that the throne would be given to Mary, Queen of Scots. And so she actually had her executed, but she was in, um, in captivity for 19 years. Can you imagine if they did that today? Just because someone didn't have a boy, <laughs> you know, that'd be cruel and unusual punishment. 
But yeah, you know, it was just crazy back then. I'm just glad I, uh, you know, I, I mean, I know I'm related to Queen Mary of Scots and, and Queen James of England, I mean, King James of England. So, because that's in my uh, lineage, if you look it up, I was asked, I was wearing a uh, royal Stuart tartan somewhere and I walked in, I think someone was saying it as a joke and says, are you a Stuart? You know, because anybody can actually wear it, but some people like, if they're really uptight and want to be a punk about it, you know, and they ask me, are you, are you really a Stuart? Do you have ID? Yeah, I'll show you my ID. And they're like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> you know? But, uh, and this is the same tartan colors that, uh, the Queen of England wears. And, but Stuart can be spelled S-T-U-A-R-T or S-T-E-W-A-R-T, either way. Um, so if, you know, you can wear that tartan. Let's take a look here, shall we? Ah, oh, it smells so good. That's what it's supposed to look like. Mimi. Now then, you can let that sit. You can see down the sides, maybe. That's all along the sides. Um, I actually like to let it cool off. And that way it comes out in one, you know, if I, if I were to cut it up, let's do this. If I were to cut it up and make it in, in grids and then take a, uh, a cake knife and take it out. And I love it the next day after it's been in the fridge. Yep. You heard that right. I love it. Leftover. It's good. And so anyway, I hope this helps someone out. If you're, you know, if you use the cream of celery, uh, put it in the comment. Let me know how that worked for you. Because I'm, I'm just kind of leery the cel cream of celery. The celery may be a little bit too overpowering to uh, taste, you know, the green beans or whatever. Okay, I hope this helped you out, and just remember, it is your kitchen, your rules. Be proud of it and own it. And if this helped you out, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm still having a problem subscribing to other people for some reason. I don't know what is going on, and they don't know what's going on. Um, I was told I may have to start all over. No, I'm not doing that. They're going to figure it out. It's their program. They can fix it. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, if, if you're going someplace and you have a party to go to and you're like, man, you know, green beans are cheap. Cream, uh, cream of mushroom soup is cheap and the onions were cheap. So, you know, you can make a dish like this and take it to a party and be proud of it. And people always love this. They really do. Okay, I hope I helped you out and we will talk to you again soon. Have a good one. Bye. Okay, we're back and I hope that's cooled off enough to show you how I like it. may be cool. I tried it when it was hot too, so, you know, just got to make sure it's good, right? It's probably not cool enough, but 
it. Been in the fridge for a little bit. Because it's got cream. It's not quite cool enough, but that's okay. Okay, it is good. Try a little bit with some beans and some onions. Mm -hmm. Exactly how I like it. You guys are probably laughing, saying, this guy's a weirdo. <laughs> no. <laughs> I really do. I like it like that. Cold. And I like it when it comes out perfectly formed. But that's not going to happen for a little while. I just wanted to show you all that. And then put it back in the refrigerator. And I hope this helps out someone. If it did, give me a thumbs up and uh, tell me how it came out if you took it to a party or whatever. And don't forget to subscribe. And just remember, it's your kitchen, your rules. Own it and enjoy it. And if you're in a warm place, go swimming. If you're in a cold place, find a warm place to go swimming. If you can't find a warm place to go swimming, snuggle up. Okay, we'll see y'all later.